Jason Lee Podcast. All right, it's finally here after all the months and months and months of hard work and the launch of all the other things, Jason Lee and Hollywood a lot. We are here for the first episode of the Jason Lee Podcast. Woo! Yes, sir. Okay, we don't have a studio audience. You know, I know it sounds like we have a whole bunch of money over here, even though we do. Uh, but anyway, it doesn't <laughs> yeah, seem like it's taking us forever to get here. Yes. Yes. Yes, definitely. Very much so. <laughs> definitely. It's been a lot. Okay, listen, I know you're probably wondering, like, who are these people you're asking questions to? So let me go ahead and first say, first of all, welcome to the Jason Lee Podcast. Now, now, I know that you all have been loving on the work that we've all been doing over at the Jason Lee Show. And everybody over there has been watching the show and said, oh my God, Jason is elevated. He's sipping cappuccino. He's great. He's the, oh, this new and improved. Yes, I am. I have elevated. I am new and improved. I have more money. I'm trying to find my inner peace. I'm in therapy. All those things are true. But at the end of the day, I'm still gay and petty and have big opinions. And those of you that have been showing up and supporting me at the Breakfast Club over the last several months that I've been co-hosting over there, even though they're wasting their time with all those other co-hosts. Um, I've been over there doing what I do, having opinions about what's happening in culture, pop culture, blog, uh, you know, the blogosphere, and what's happening in politics. And so now, although the Jason Lee Cappuccino Sipper, who's over there at the Jason Lee Show, has now trotted along the studio, actually walked down the hall into this beautiful room, which is the podcast space, where the OG Jason Lee tilly, tea spilling, I almost said till spilling. It's been so long since I spilled the tea, I don't even know how to spill it anymore. That's a lie. So anyway, the OG tea spilling machine, as you know, Jason Lee is here, and that is where we get into all things important to you. Now look, I wanted to start this podcast where you can get all the tea with me and even bring in some friends or some viral people to talk about things that are important, but I also brought along my squad. Now, TMZ gave you know, Harvey, the landscape to bring in all these little white people and all a couple of little <laughs> specks of blacks to come in there and bring to you their ideas of what, um, you know, pop culture stuff looks like through the lenses of others. I brought in my team where we don't have a bunch of white people. We got a bunch of colors and one white girl, but she's not white. <laughs> she's actually Croatian. She, that's white. And she got a black man. Okay. <laughs> let me introduce you. Let me introduce you. To my squad, okay, the supervisor and producer of the Jason Lee Show, Marina Perry. And my friend of many years, more than I actually want to count, um, and also a part of the Jason Lee Show, Lee Char. Glad to be here. And one of my assistants, he's the personal one who's always trying to find himself, all the way from Dominican Republic. Uh, he's a scammer. His name is Rico. Hey. Woo! Scam life. We made right. it. So, uh, doesn't it seem like it's been forever to get here? Yes. Yes. Very much so. And I'm the newest one in this group. But, <laughs> but do you all feel like, because there's so much pressure put on me now that I have to be this elevated person that I can't get into the T, when really the T is just, it's it's an acronym for talking about what's going on in the world, mm -hmm. right? I always say that many people think that I'm, why are you rocking in that chair? Are you okay? Yeah. Because <laughs> I do have Adderall if you need to. Stay focused. Yes. Okay. You're actually on camera. No, but I mean, like, I, I really feel like, you know, I get a lot of criticism for the things that I do. And I think it's because I have just a fearlessness about myself to say what other people are thinking. The other thing is I've always reckon, tried to reconcile with the idea that people think that I'm messy when really we're all participating in mess. It's like what you say. I'm not messy, the truth is. And that's some real shit. And you can't report on something that somebody doesn't put out. Let me say it again. Right, but, who, but who's messy, though? Is it the people that are doing it? Is it the people that can't consume enough of it? Or the people that are making millions of dollars doing it? <laughs> right. I would say we're all messy. Everything is a mess. The world is a mess. And we're going to get into all that shortly. But I just wanted to say I'm so excited to finally be here. I want to first shout out before anything the Gag Nation, all of the Gag Nation fans who have been waiting for us. I'm going to go ahead and piece you up with a sound effect because we got that, too. All of the Gag Nation has been waiting patiently for us to get the podcast going again. We are here, and this is the first episode. So I promise you one thing. There will be lots of kinks. We have been here in the studio for probably six hours trying to figure out a one-hour show, and it's probably going to end up being three hours. But either way, <laughs> the math ain't math, and the life is still going to live. So yes, you will see segments here like The Tea with Jason Lee, which is going to feature all of my take on the hottest topics, and I'm going to bring you panels of people besides my cohorts or my my bullpen, I'm going to bring people who are popping on the internet, celebrities, influencers, uh, politicians, porn stars, everything that's wild that don't belong over there, going to find us well over here. And we're all going to have fun and chime in on what's happening, and we're going to have fun while we do it. Now, look, let's get right into it. 
I have to tell you, um, before we even started the show, I saw that Candy has had a lot to say, and I don't want to go <laughs> all into the show and um, you know not mention it. Now, for those of you that are not ready to brace for impact, don't worry, because I'm not going to lash out. Old Jason would have not been able to wait to come in here and get a peach and throw it as hard as I could. But I'm not her husband. I don't want a peach. And I don't want to throw anything. I'm now, just, some would say you just, just threw shade. Glasses. Some would say I just threw shade. What? That was beyond shade. That no, it was wasn't. like forest fields. Well, listen, it wasn't shade. Let me just be very clear. Uh, there's this perception out there that I fight with a lot of black women. Now, I'm going to just tell you right now. I fight with everybody. And this show is going to offend so many people. If you are a drag queen, you're going to be offended. If you are a Republican, you're going to be offended. If you're a woman, you're going to be offended. If you're a man, you're going to be offended. If you're gay, you're going to be offended. If you're cute, I'm going to slide in your dim. If you're <laughs> ugly, you're going to be offended. This is a show where I'm an equal opportunity agitator. So no matter who you are, you are all going to feel it at some point. But I have to say, I want to address this candy thing because the elephant in the room, at least that's online that I see uh, uh, on one of the blogs, shout out to my friend Kyle at the Neighborhood Talk who posted a clip of Candy uh, asserting that I've been trashing her. Now, I just have to say, Candy, nobody's been trashing you. I've just been critical of your lack of performance on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. I said many times, and I'm going to put a clip together and I'll share it at some point, how much I think I like Candy. I was playing Escape. Uh, Getting them who, notes, too. Who can I run to? I was playing Who yeah. Can I Run To while we were warming up. Right you before the understand. podcast. You don't have to talk into the microphone. But yes, I was doing all of that. <laughs> I mean, I was listening to Escape when Latasha was escaping the group. <laughs> I was listening to Escape when all... Here I am. <laughs> there you go. There you there go. You go. See, I've arrived. Right. Cappuccino. Nice. Cappuccino. No, no, this is not cappuccino. This is this is the this tea. Is the tea. <laughs> no, but the reality is, is I big. I think the problem is, is that people have a hard time when I have opinions, and and I'm only opening the show with this before we even get into the segments. I had to get one off the clip because <laughs> what I'm what I know for sure is going to happen is that people have forgotten that I have big opinions and that I say what I think about things. I'm only one person that's built millions of followers who listen to what I think, but it's literally just what I think. And I tend to be a reflection of what other people are saying. But what is interesting is this narrative online, Candy, that you're trying to create that I somehow been trashing you. I have not been trashing you. I've said, I like you. Hollywood Unlocked thinks your storyline on Housewives of Atlanta is corny. Now, I, I'm going to say this. I want you to continue to be great. And congratulations on everything that you're doing over there at Amazon and that you're doing on Housewives of Atlanta and the Old Lady Gang restaurant. Uh, Whatever you're doing, I'm happy for you. But I will say, you're an amazing songwriter. Continue to write songs. You write country, you write pop, you write r and I mean, nice. Tamar said you can't sing, and the other girl said that you, your voice was annoying. But either way, I don't agree with that. I think you can sing. I've been just kicking it for decades, and I've been a supporter of yours. And I ain't fucking with no scrubs. But I have to tell you, be a songwriter. Don't get to slinging the shit, because... I used to do this thing called problematic, where I would pick a person that's being problematic and then I would break down all the tea with receipts. And I promise you if I do that and show that you've been um, a transgression for the advancement of black women and yourself, I think you'll have a problem. I'm not SWV, I'm not Mona Scott Young, this is not a production. I know that you found um, a co-host in Atlanta who will kind of sling your shit for you on the side. I'm holding you accountable for whatever comes out his fat mouth too. I'm just here to do my job as I see it I talked about this on March 21st, and here we are now on April 7th talking about something I talked about in a whole other zip code. So I don't really want to get into that here because I have been in therapy, and as everybody can see, I'm doing a lot better. Mm -hmm. He is doing better. Mm -hmm. Someone who has known him for 16 years, he's doing a lot better. I, I give you that. Yes. I give you that. Yes, I am. I am. I gave you that. But I'm still that same OG. They and don't that's, know. And that's the thing. That's so what people be afraid of. Well, people were afraid of the boogeyman until you look under the bed and see he's not there. But I am the boogeyman when I need to be. And here's the deal. I'm not using my platform. You know, I used to use my platform to get into a people. I'm not. Yes, I was a little petty right now responding to the petty shade because it's entertaining. Why not? But let me just get to the true core of everything. Candy, I wish you the best. Jason Lee likes you. Hollywood Unlocked thinks that your storyline is corny. We've been critical of that. 
And as celebrities and public figures, just like I'm a public figure, we are going to be picked apart. People are going to watch the show and have an opinion. I don't get in a fight with the comments. They can say what they want. And you had an opinion, and I'm responding to you because you're another public figure. But ultimately, we're in this game where people are going to criticize what we do. I'm just not as sensitive as you are, apparently. And you have my phone number like I have yours. There's not much to talk about because I'm not mad. Like, this is a one-sided fight that I feel like I'm... A part of, yeah, being drug into. Yeah. So anyway, I wish you the best, Candy. Um, good luck on Candy Coated Nights, and um, keep your peach. Amen. I thought you were to say that. Amen. That wasn't even a part of today's show, but that literally just happened as we were outside. I'm mm -hmm. like, dang, like, what's happening? It came to you. You didn't go to it. The spirit was here. The spirit of the Lord comes. I didn't upon. say it was the spirit of the oh, Lord. Sorry. Shout out said, to um, Fred Hammond. Hey Amen. I do right. listen to gospel music. All right. Now look. Now that we've gotten through that, <laughs> let me set up the show for you. Every podcast, okay, I'm going to give you a recap on what's going on like I just did. So I literally just did that to show you what I've been going through in the last 10 minutes. But that's, I'll do a recap of what's happening and what's going on. You know, I'm all the way out here in the streets. Sometimes I got my Dior on. Sometimes I'm covered in the... Kanye Gap Balenciaga outfits that never came out. Um, shout out to Rico. He's actually wearing a, a shirt. Um, Rico actually went over to the Gap headquarters and took all the clothes. <laughs> and See didn't bring me nothing. There. No, I'm just saying, in case Kanye's watching, he knows who the, <laughs> who's asked to kick. He took it. He stole it? No. <clears throat> no. Shout out to the person uh, I can say uh, the name. Uh, 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 you don't, I, you don't, I don't I tell on the plug. Tell you don't I ever just, give up the plug. I just say, no name. So in the Dominican Republic, when y'all snitch on people, what happens? <laughs> what? <laughs> you what? You get cut up. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Remind me okay, to handle you up in the show. So we'll give you a recap <laughs> of what's happening. Now, whenever I have a guest, um, they're going to share their own updates. So we're going to do a deep dive and get all into this stuff. Today, we don't have a guest because I, I really wanted to use this as an opportunity to reach directly uh, deep into our fan base to show you that we have finally arrived and we're going to get through a lot of the housekeeping in this episode so you know what's happening. But I could not do the show without actually doing what God put me on earth to do. And that is get into the tea with Jason Lee. I deserve all that applause. I was about to say that was a long applause. It was a very um, well-deserving applause. You know, um, and I understand a lot of us, maybe like you, grew up without a lot of people like applauding you, you know, or encouraging. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had love in my house. I have a question though. Before we get into it, why is it called T with Jason Lee? Why is the T? Why does it gotta be called T? Like, how long have you worked for me? A year. How long have we been building this studio? There's an entire Couple tea cup months. right here, and you're just asking me what the tea is? <laughs> no, I know what the tea means, but I'm saying, like, why, okay. why so, tea? So, okay, let me give you how where the tea comes from. Gay people started the word, like, oh, we're going to spill the tea, right? So the tea, because we sip slow, right? There's a sip button right here. See the sound? <laughs> what? So we sip the tea as we gossip. And so then... Black women, white women, and everybody else, black, white men, everybody started picking up the tea, but we started that. We sip the tea and we sip it slow. Sometimes it's too hot to sip, so you go, you know? But I'm not gonna serve it too, too hot today, but then again, I might. Can I get into my job now? I love how you just asked the question for your whole country. Like the whole country right. of Dominican Republic, like, what is Rico there spilling tea they for? Want the <laughs> All right. Listen, uh, we're gonna get into some hot topics, and you know, uh, back in the day when I used to do gagging with Jason Lee, I used to be so animated. I think oftentimes you guys missed the, the the message because the delivery was so distracting. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do it differently this time, unless I really feel motivated to go there. Because there will be times where I have to. You gotta you know go into character a little bit. What character? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> what character? Like the one that Rico often films of you whenever you're doing things you're not supposed to be doing? First of all, that's called oh, exploiting me because I did not sign a release form and I got just as, as many as videos you got me, I got way more of him. He just don't see them yet. Mm. Yet. No comment. Right. See how I started that problem <clears throat> without any effort? Okay. Anyway, so look, we're going to go ahead and get right into it because there's a lot going on. But no, I wanted to get into this first topic. Donald Trump, he just got indicted. Now, 
All of you have seen the Cheeto in charge get indicted. I never would have thought my whole life that I would have seen a sitting president get uh, indicted. But this is a person who was elected. Remember, he did the whole grabbing by the pussy, didn't release his tax forms. He did a lot of different things that black folks could have never, ever done. If Barack Obama would have done one of these things, he would have been assassinated. OK, but former U.S. President Donald Trump has now made history becoming the first leader of the free world to ever be charged with a crime. Now, if you don't think that this is true or haven't been watching the news because you're just somewhere on the block. Take a look at this photo of him yesterday <laughs> on his way in court. This is literally your president. Okay, now we usually do this when it comes to Black Lives Matter, but anyway, you know, Trump has been a racist for years and Black Lives Have Not Matter. Last week, Trump was indicted and now he's facing 34 felony accounts saying that he paid for vagina from this woman. <laughs> now, I don't know whether or not he did it. Stormy Daniels, he who's he allegedly has paid $130,000 of hush money to, but they're saying that he made some other payments. There's 34 charges. Now, the charges have been brought against him by a black district attorney in New York. Uh, and his name, what is his name again? Alvin. Alvin okay, Bragg. Alvin Bragg. So he's a black, this man right here. Mm. Look like one of the sons of Martin Luther King. Look like anyway, that. his dream was to bring charges to Trump, and he did. Now, Char Trump has now been indicted and went to Manhattan in front of a jury, a grand jury, and a judge uh, because of these payments that he allegedly made in order to cover things up. This was all happening while he was running for president. Apparently, it's illegal to pay money to shut down lies so the public doesn't know, and they vote for you because you're going for the public trust. Whatever. Now, Michael Cohen is an attorney who is a disgraced attorney who went to jail, who was a part of this whole scheme, said that he handled and facilitated all the payments and that he paid Stormy Daniels a lot of money in order for her to remain silent on this alleged affair from a decade earlier. Now, the DA's office began this investigation when Trump was in uh, office, and now Trump is saying that this is somehow happening because they're trying to block him from winning the president, uh, the presidential election in 2024. So after he left court, he actually went down to Mar-a-Lago where he did a whole press conference, uh, gaslighting everybody to believe in his bullshit. And a lot of white folks showed up. I didn't really see any specs of black, so we all know that Diamond and Silk, one of them died, so they didn't even show up. That duo's over. Damn, it's like Puffy it? and Mace, everything comes to They really end. died? One of them died. Of what? Who cares? <laughs> Nobody cares. But they, he did this whole press conference where he gaslit his base. And here's the thing. While I believe that there's there's two things happening. One, I think there's an extreme problem in D.C. right now with Kamala Harris and Joe Biden and their ability to have effective messaging. But then there's also Trump, who by getting indicted by a black man in New York City over something in the time of it all looking speculatory, is going to gaslight his base into believing that he's being robbed and the, demo dem de the democracy of the country is being robbed. Right, right. When this is the man who literally should own Marvel Comics because he created a bunch <laughs> of Spider-Men who climbed the fuck up <laughs> the Capitol in DC. The people seem to listen to him more. Right, but why is that? So like as young people, when you see Biden, and because you're how, you're 24? 24. So when you see Biden, Joe Biden, and then you see Trump, what is your assessment of both of them? When I think about Trump, I think about money. He gave us the stimulus, like. <laughs> Oh my God! Nah, nah, but I'm, I'm being nah, 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 but I'm being I'm being real. Me too. You asked me about Biden. The only me thing too. that I remember is that he did something for the college people, like yeah, right, you're right. right. He but right. did anybody Hit did that fall facts, through? Did that fall through? And I feel That's like it goes right. back to like the squeakiest. <laughs> what is it? The squeakiest <laughs> wheel gets the oil or something. The squeakiest wheel gets the ground by the vagina. The <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> that that that, and that's why Donald Trump, I think, gets more positive things just because he's louder. Joe Biden just stays in the cut. Or grandpa. falls off a bike. Right. And he was going in on <laughs> oh, Hillary for doing way worse. So why wouldn't he go to jail if he was pushing so hard for her to go? He right. needs to go. Those of you that don't know what he's talking about, you, again, if you're living under a rock. And I also feel like you young people don't pay attention to politics no. the way that you should. During the uh, 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 the um, him running for president, he was going after Hillary Clinton in her emails. <laughs> yeah. Remember, there was the photo of her that went viral where she was sitting in the airport looking on a BlackBerry. <laughs> and she had a trench coat on, and he basically was saying, "Lock her up." Every time he went to a rally, he was screaming to white people everywhere. White any white person is lock her up, lock her up, lock her up. And now he's actually being indicted. Right. And I'm actually mad at Hillary because Hillary, you should be front and center in front of CNN right. cameras with a red hat on that says, "Lock him up." What is that? Uh, <laughs> Not the hat on deck. <laughs> this Not is for you, Hillary. Deck, no, but I mean, like, you know, you should, um, you know, she should feel some type of way because she, in in, in many ways, lost to Trump right. in a very embarrassing way. Uh, and this is a man who, again, who, in case you're not remembering, he 
did a lot of racism back in the day with tenants. He had a lot to do with the, um, he bought an ad basically trying to prosecute or have successfully helped prosecute right. the Central Park Five, uh, the guys, the black guys who were accused of raping a white woman and when they didn't. Um, and I mean, the list goes on and on. He his taxes. Yep. Then we found out he didn't pay no taxes. And this is somebody who became a billionaire right. uh, after he got a little loan of a million or two dollars from his dad. <laughs> so, so now Stormy right. and her, her lawyers are happy uh, that this indictment <laughs> has happened. And even though Trump is maintaining his innocence and saying they had nothing to do with it, uh, a lot of other people, like uh, his former attorney Michael Cohen, has said that he did. Now, Trump is actually shocked that he got arrested. That's that's what blows me. I I think this is the first time that he sees that his money doesn't have any effect. Like no, because the law is for us, not for them. So therefore, now that he feels the pressure of what real life is, he don't. What is this? What is like responsibility? I don't know. Well, let's what that be clear: is. slavery. Jim Crow, right. police and jails. So right. police and jails are is it's a it's a part of the lineage of racism and and uh, and slavery in our country. Right. And so, not to disrespect all y'all white folks, a lot of y'all feel like y'all are above the law and like it doesn't apply to you because in the way that it was constructed, it didn't. Right. And so but now, I, for somebody like a Trump to to violate so many groups of people. You remember he said, lock all the Mexicans in cages. He separated he kids from their parents at the border. He said that Muslims were terrorists. Mm -hmm. He closed the borders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did do a lot for the economy. You got to give him that. Got he did a lot. The stimulus checks, the uh, the PPP loans that a lot of y'all are going to prison for. <laughs> he, he gave us a lot of things that helped us benefit in our businesses. Uh -huh. Did anybody go to jail, though? Yeah, the, the yeah. dude from, um uh, what's the group name? What's the group name? Was spectacular. Uh, Pretty Ricky. He uh, just went to prison for millions of dollars yeah. of scamming. Blue. Uh, hey, you blew you out. You said Trump is <laughs> your hero. I don't know. But either way, I just think he hasn't been <laughs> held accountable. This is the first time a U.S. president has ever been indicted and had to get fingerprinted and go before a court and a jury. But don't you think He's he likes right. that and he wants that? Because that's what it's given to me, like villain, like the Joker when he gets arrested in the movie. It's like The Apprentice. It's a reality show. Right. Right. That's what I'm saying. I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't watch the news, but yesterday... Every, every news outlet was Trump. Everything. That's but, but but I will say this: when you were watching Trump as president, were you did you watch him more as president or did you watch Biden no, no, no. more? Definitely Trump. Oh well, definitely, definitely Trump. Trump. Well, what about Obama versus Trump? No, Obama. Obama, Obama was Obama like girl. when Obama was in the president, it was easy for mm -hmm. like us foreigners to like give visa to become citizen and all that. When Trump came in office, it's like Trump everything changed. You ain't seen your uncles and aunties in a long mm. time. I know it's, it's, it's not fair. But I use you as an example, although we make a joke, you actually are, are on your pathway to citizenship. You actually Correct. are doing the right I'm a things. Resident, you're so, a resident. Yeah. So you're doing the things, your passport ain't shit. I don't know. Well, I'll tell you well, stories. Well, well, I got a Dubai, I got a Dubai um thingy Stamp. now, and now it's, they look at me higher. Like when they look at my Dominican passport, like, you went to Dubai? Like the t the guy asked me, like, you went to Dubai? Like, he was shocked. Yeah, but you still got left at the airport because you didn't have a visa to go to Dubai. So, I mean, it still typically ain't really shit, but you're working on it. You're working on it. The thing is, is that this is a country where people should be able to migrate and find a better life going through an established process for the right reasons. And there's a lot of people who are dying at the borders trying to get over. You had a friend who died on the way to the United States. I just feel like to humanize the situation and people don't really understand if you're not connected to the issues that these uh, politicians are f voting for that you're electing or refusing to vote to elect in office, you're a part of the problem too. And so now yes. you have Trump yes. who is saying that he's above the law. This is a person that we've seen be lawless and be a thug for a long time and racist, but <laughs> still will probably get the young vote yeah, in 2024. He still will be president 24. But that's, I feel like, I, the I 21st so. century thing of, like, everyone likes drama more than, like, actual politics. And I feel like people are just lean on because it's dramatic, not because it's, I don't know. You Literally, know I mean? but if you think about it, he kind of used just, social media like a millennial would yes. to win the campaign. He trolled the hell out of Hillary. I mean, Hillary couldn't even call. But remember she called? I'm not gonna say what she what he said, but she coughed and he said it was pretty much a big disease. But well, it, but she was filmed falling down on the way to her car. People fall. People fall. I mean, at least Joe Biden fell when he became president. Joe, right. I almost said something, but... Um, this is the podcast where you say... Joe Biden's a thousand years old. He's going to fall a lot. Not but at the end of the day, he needs to get up. That's the problem. But, because, um, you know, like you said, I you, I you made a very, very, very valid point. I like Biden. We 
I'm trying to become a citizen. <laughs> <laughs> you would just better hope he's here. It's but you saw they still found the court papers. You got to go to court soon. Like they don't care that you try to become a citizen. They're gonna treat you like an American, a black brown American. Mm, so mm, mm, yeah, mm. Biden, get him out of trouble. <laughs> but go ahead. What were you saying? I was gonna say that like you made a point. Donald Trump, we saw him all the time. Even if you didn't like him, he wasn't a supporter. Yeah. You knew right. exactly what he was about. You knew what he stood mm -hmm. for. You know uh -huh. the progress that was made. Not every lie he told. Biden, I don't know anything about this man. I'm not even being funny. I voted for him just because I was so desperate to get Donald Trump out. But Rico also made a good point. I ain't got no stimulus check yet. <laughs> and LA is in a crisis right now. Mm -hmm. We already have a huge homeless population. But right? wait, let's slow down. And this is part of the problem. Young people don't know how politics work. Right. Biden has nothing to do with the LA homelessness. Right. That's a local issue. That's why people need to vote in your local election. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Karen Bass, who became the first black woman mayor of Los Angeles, who's been a big supporter. Those of you who've been following Hollywood Unlocked for a while, you know she helped me get some out of prison. She's the real deal. She actually does the work. And she's actually doing the work of addressing homelessness here. The, the president giving you stimulus checks, I don't care if those stimulus checks add up to five or $6,000, probably five or $6,000 that we needed. Right. When you think about the fact that you have, you have sisters? Yes. So you have one, sisters and you have sister. a mother yep. and you have aunties. Yes. And those women now and their ability to control whether or not they give birth is, is, is being attacked right. by the Republican party that's now being led by Trump. So when you think about the impact that Republicans have on women, the fact that he wants to take away transgender rights, the fact that they put a Supreme Court justice in there to be able to say that um, gays shouldn't have the rights that we have today. The fact that black people don't vote and then on top of that, don't believe they can lose the right to vote. Just like women thought they couldn't lose the right to uh, having a decision right, over right. their bodies. Yeah. It's That's a slippery insane. slope. And so, yes, in the grand scheme of things, it's great to get a PPP loan so I can run out and buy Gucci and Versace and all of that. And crab legs. <laughs> right. But the reality so. is, is what's at stake right now is literally the freedoms that we all take for granted. And if you also think about it, because Amanda Seals was recently on the Jason Lee show. What civil rights leaders after uh, um, Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson and Angela Davis, once they pass away, because they all too shall die. Are we going to have to actually fight for the rights of people of color? <sighs> You know what I mean? Um, Dolores Huerta fighting for the field workers and for Latinos. Like when you think about it, the people who helped transition this world into what we know now that we're struggling to maintain are all on their way out the door. We got Sean King. Stop it. We're not even <laughs> going to entertain that. Let's move on because you try to drag me into some mess. Speaking of drags, bye. Wig. All right. Speaking of mess uh, and drags, RuPaul is... <laughs> I know y'all say I got a problem with what women, black women. I have I have always had a problem with drag queens. I have never under my mother brought a drag queen home when I was a kid. Her name, his no, it's not trans. His name was Sparkle, and the reason why. Stop it. Excuse me. His name was Sparkle. Big old white, blonde, <laughs> matted wig wearing. Why did he come to you? Hold on, house? listen, listen. This is why I know he wasn't trans. Because a lot of people don't know the difference between a trans and a drag queen. Right. And so just so, and I'm saying this before y'all try to cancel me, I'm gay, so I can say, fuck all what you're talking about. Okay. A drag queen is a man like that, that, who dresses up like a woman for entertainment. I also found out that a trans can be, a trans woman can also be a drag queen. Laverne told us that. Laverne, I ain't gonna lie, I loved you on the Jason Lee show over at Revolt, but this is where we spill this. I know what the fuck you was talking about. I know what a trans drag queen was. Send me the cliff notes from your community because I'm so confused at what y'all get to be at this point. Now, the drag queens that used to scare me started as a little boy. I remember I went to the refrigerator to get some of the government cheese that the government used to send to us. It's the best cheese, Velveeta. You ain't got shit on this cheese. And I remember looking in the closet and there was a big old blonde matted wig standing next to some Hanes underwear. Now, this is where I knew that he wasn't, Sparkle wasn't trans because at first when Sparkle came in the door with all the glitter on, I was like, oh, mom got a girlfriend over. You know what I mean? And then when he would go to the shower, he didn't have boobs, but he had the Hanes underwear and he would take his wig off and he looked like Chuck. So it's sort of like, anyway, that'll get me canceled. I'm not gonna say that. Uh, so Sparkle was my first introduction to drag queens. I never really understood it, but I guess drag queens have rights too. Now, typically, <laughs> typically drag queens are out there to entertain people. We have a really successful show that RuPaul is a part of called 
uh, the what's it called? RuPaul's Drag Race. RuPaul's Drag Race. And this yeah. is where they're all racing to be the best dragger that they could be. Now, drag culture is going mainstream now because of RuPaul. And it's bigger than ever because popular children's teddy bear store, Build-A-Bear, <laughs> is now unveiling their latest addition to the collectibles. <laughs> What? Why you? I don't. I don't get. Calm down. Let like me it. set it up. Just, just wait for the punchline. I, I show with pictures. They are now coming up with a drag queen teddy bear. Now, if you think I'm lying, <laughs> if you think this is a joke, <laughs> let me show you. This is the teddy bear. Now, <laughs> first um, of all, RuPaul, you have an amazing wig stylist and your makeup is beat for the gods and, and look all jokes aside before i get into what i think about this let me just say rupaul is one of the most successful if not the, the most successful drag queen in the world um emmy winning star on hollywood made lots of money uh at a time when drag queens i guess were considered a sideshow and for some people they probably still think they are uh, you know, I think RuPaul did a really good job of taking it mainstream yeah. with You Better Work and was accepted and embraced in a way that had never been done before. So you can't take away the accolades. And the okay. fact that Ru was able to get a teddy bear with a wig to be sold as a drag queen bear for kids who want a drag queen teddy bear, um, that's a big accomplishment. So congratulations to RuPaul for that. This is complete bullshit, though. Now, <laughs> the company that represents it. the bear is saying that the, since there's a growing acceptance of representation of drag culture in the media and in society, that they want to be able to sell this bear because the world has embraced drag queens. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to say as a disclaimer, this is not an attack on the LGBTQAI plus community because there ain't no D in that. Well, there is, but there's no D in the, you know what I mean. <laughs> Moving right along. No, okay. So, what do you think though? Like, would you buy your kids a drag queen build a bear? I have a question. Are there kid drag queens? I mean, there's little kids, I guess, that may play in their mommy's shoes, no, or that's a, a thing. So, if there's no kid drag queen or drag queen shows, I understand it, and I'm all for inclusion and acceptance. I think that. If you want a bear, build a bear, but I just want to know what is the purpose. If it's to celebrate the legacy of RuPaul, let's call it that. That's fine. But I think, you know, I believe you could teach your kid whatever you want to be. And I don't think any wrong or right way, as long as a parent is there. Right. Okay. But at the end of the day, some things like, you know, I think any form of sexuality to a kid, whether it's you see a, the mommy and daddy kissing in front of the kid, whether you see hugging, I think it's inappropriate because kids do learn. Because you'll see kids like humping and doing stuff. But I don't know. I'll push on that. I'll push back on that because then some would say seeing Zaya, White, Zaya Wade, you know, uh, promote trans equality for young people is a bad thing. And there's that conversation happening online. Every time we post Zaya... Uh, there's a whole bunch of people that criticize her. I recently ran into uh, Gabrielle Union and Dwayne Wade at Queen Latifah's birthday party, and I pulled them aside to tell them how I respect how they're advocating. That's one thing. I think trans identif identity is important. You know, Laverne Cox did a great job of educating people on the show about that. We, we, I've grown as a person of, in the LGBT community, somebody who's openly gay. I've had to learn a lot about the trans community. Shout out to T.S. Madison, who was un instrumental in helping me understand that, who came on the show. Shout out to Flame Monroe. Uh, shout out to Laverne Cox. Um, shout out to, um, oh, shout out to Laith Ashley, who was also a part of the Hollywood Unlocked uh, experience when he came on the podcast. You know, I've learned a lot about the trans movement. Now, I've been somebody who's been very, very much publicly consistent on this. I remember when... Uh, Lewis Hamilton was under fire because his his nephew or his nephew wore a dress and he said something on Instagram. He said, don't wear, little boys don't wear dresses. And people were attacking him. And, you know, that may be something where like a kid wears mommy shoes or puts on a dress or whatever. And I feel like within your home, you get to decide if your kid wears a dress right, or not. And right. we shouldn't have a public opinion. That being said, I think creating a drag queen teddy bear not a trans teddy bear. I would be okay with that. Yeah. But a drag queen teddy bear is saying that outside of Halloween, you should be dressed up as a girl. Right. right. I don't know. I don't think you should be pushing that on kids. I think that would lean towards some of the arguments that you see online where people are saying we're doing too much to push our kids in the wrong direction. Right. And 
if a kid asks for it, then give it to them. But if they're not asking for it, what are you doing? You're pushing it on them. I just feel like times are changing. Like people is expressing themselves more. Like if there's a transgender though, I don't see personally why there's an issue with a drag. Hold on. I don't see why there's an issue with it because me in specific, like I had an uncle, right? Uncle um, who dressed himself as a drag queen in DR. But like in DR to us, he was just like gay. You know what I mean? With the, he was not like a drag queen or, you know what I mean? But we just know that Renzo, that's his name. We just know that he just dressed like that for the carnival and stuff like that. So we knew that he transformed himself to a woman of like, you know, when okay. we see them, yeah, but I, we didn't have, we were not big on like titles and stuff like that. When I moved to the United States, that's when I, you know, I started to realize and like, okay, so that's what my uncle does is called this. Like, you know what I mean? They call him this automatically. So you know? for you, your uncle was entertaining. Yes, for me, I, I just looked at but it how like how was your that. uncle? He's no grown, like you know. Okay, so yeah, the, and, and no, he's so very the question, gay. Here, the question here isn't like whether or not you like drag queens. That's your choice. You anybody, correct, any, correct. anybody in here can go to Hamburger Mary's on a Sunday and entertain the drag show during the drag brunch. What I'm saying is, when uh, when you're going down the aisles at Toys R Us, may they rest in peace, and you're looking for a Cabbage Patch doll, do you think it's okay to see a teddy bear? For your three or four or five or six and year old kid, that's times, a drag queen bear. In today's times, yes. Couldn't speak back then, but in today's times, yes. Okay. But I feel like the bears aren't either <coughs> girls nor male or female. They're just bears. So I feel like little kids don't let that click. But also I think it's interesting on the website, all their collabs, they have a Disney Stitch collab, a Super Mario collab. Those are on the regular website. But to get to the RuPaul bear, you have to enter the bear cave and you have to say, you have to confirm that you're over 18, which is crazy to me. So like they're still censoring. It's not like it's on a generic well, that's website, wrong. which is interesting because I'm like, why are you still ostracizing? Let me tell you why. That? Because I don't know the last time Build-A-Bear has been in the news, but now they're all in the news and they're actually here. The first time we've ever talked about them here. And I know the people that own Build-A-Bear. Mm hmm. Is because they created something that's controversial. This is free marketing. Yeah, right. so, so, and, you know, I don't think that the gay community or the drag community should be used as props or as right, ways right. of reinventing or reinvesting the community in your brands. You know, nobody, I've never seen one tweet, one text, one Instagram post of anybody demanding a drag <laughs> teddy bear. No. Never. I've never heard that. And so, if it's one of those things where you should have a drag teddy bear because everybody has one, then put it right next to the, to the, the little regular mermaid one. bear. Yeah, correct, correct. The, no, the, the real thing that's controversial is that the bear doesn't even come with shoes. You have to spend $8 to get the heels. And it comes with a little cane. Not heel. being $50 plus We got eight. a photo. Pull it up, Johnny. The heel. Okay. My problem with the heel is why is the foot falling outside right. of the shoe? Like he has a cane So wait, wait. No, first of all, now... I've seen pictures of Sukiana like this, where her <laughs> her foot has been spilled outside. No, I'm just playing Suki. Uh, but I mean, we. I'm just saying, the, why was the black foot falling out the shoe? That black bear, <laughs> that to me was racism on top of that. I think it's just his fur. No, but why can't it be foot. a polar bear? It offended church ladies Th That's everywhere. the part. They made it very brown. Very brown. That bear is brown. I mean, some could Melanated. say because RuPaul created it, but still, RuPaul ain't that, that brown. No, right. That well, either way, social media has had a lot to say about it. Now, some this is what some people have said online. I didn't say this, okay? My RuPaul Build-A-Bear arrived today, and I love her. It's the shoes for me. Again. <laughs> is it? But, but, but here's my question. Would you call a drag queen bear a her when she's in drag, you would? Yes. I don't Put know. Put the picture of the bear back up. Let me see. For you listening, you guys need to go out and look at. Okay, the bear got on makeup. So do you get to remove the makeup? Or is no, it always in drag? It's stitched Not, on. Oh. Okay, what the a drag. The wig, I think, comes on. What a drag. Okay, now look, this person had this to say on online. Technically speaking, a teddy bear can't be a drag queen because teddy bears aren't male or female. The real crime here is charging over $50 for a teddy bear. That's some out of control materialism. If you ask me, I draw a hard line at forty nine ninety nine. Right. That right. wait, Jeez. teddy bears are forty nine dollars. No, these toys are expensive. The bear is fifty six dollars plus tax, and then it's eight dollars for the heels. How so much for shipping over and handling? That part. Jeez. Well, it depends on how fat the bear is, I guess. You know okay, that. well, look, this fan had something to say. A person uh, tweeted, children's toys are now under attack, and that is re that is a ridiculous price for a bear. Just saying, okay, now this is another person. Well, and then, th is that all we got? Is that it? Th okay, and this person said, no one is forcing you to buy the RuPaul Build-A-Bear for your right. children, and if someone buys it for their kids, oh, well, there isn't anything you can do about it. Well, I guess, listen, this is uh, Build-A-Bear uh, drag equality. Right. Uh, and I have to say again, shout out to RuPaul for... You know, um, getting another bag. 
yeah. from being a drag. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, listen, this has been a topic that's been all over my Instagram. And I have to tell you, um, a lot of you are saying that I'm being a hater. And that's fine because um, your daddy didn't come back from the liquor store. So oh, I had... Jesus. Come on. Was that low? <laughs> Uh, my dad never that's came not home. My dad never came home. This is the thing. Most of you think that I'm being shady, but you have to understand from personal experience, my father literally never spent one night at my house. So I don't see it as a bad thing. Have you ever seen one night at his house? Of course. Okay. But he's dead now. Why are we talking about him? Oh, I brought him up, huh? Jason. When I brought him up? Yes. Oh, sorry. No, but the thing, what I'm trying to say is, is that my dad's never come to my house before. And so for me, I don't understand when I say your daddy never came home. Like people are like, oh my God, that's shady. Like you have undealt with trauma because your father didn't come home. I didn't tell him to go get the liquor. Your mom did. And uh, that's probably why he didn't come home. Um, Either way, there's a lot of you that are still searching for significance online because somehow in your little lives, you're just not enough. You know, um, I started at the top of the show saying that I was the little train that could. I am the little train that could. And a lot of you little trains that couldn't went and bought yours. And this is what we're talking about. Verification on Instagram. All <sighs> of you paid influencers are now fucking up the game. And I have to tell fucking you, I pissed up. a lot of you off. Now, Mark Zuckerberg, who owns Meta, which owns Facebook and Instagram and, and WhatsApp and everything else, have, who's monopolized social media, has now changed Instagram. And following the footsteps of Elon Musk and uh, over at Twitter, because now they're making users pay for the verification. So if you want the blue check, the thing that everybody has been fighting for, and I'll tell you, as a business person, as an influencer, I fought to get I it too, too, but I earned it, okay? They're now able to get the blue check to validate them. Now, Meta, again, the umbrella company for all these companies, has rolled out this new subscription plan that allows people to either pay $11.99 per month for a verification on the web or $14.99 per month on mobile. Now. This allows you to instantly, regardless of who you are, you can be a cake baker, a cigarette roller, you can be a dog walker. You, you can, can be homeless. You could be homeless. You could be your grandma. Any, any, Your grandma can literally be verified at this point. <laughs> Wild. So according to Meta, buying a blue check will now help small businesses establish a presence on Instagram and Facebook and also provide a suite to support them like they've never been supported before. Now, um... I've had a lot to say about this. I posted on social media because I feel like for those of us that built legitimate brands and legitimate businesses, we did not become legitimate when we got the blue check. We did the work that set the path for legitimacy exactly. that earned the blue check that mm -hmm. let people know we were a verified brand that they could trust. So the exactly. blue check represented trust. A lot of you have been seeing me post on social media and you think I'm taking a direct attack at your character. It's not that. I'm taking a direct attack on a few things, but I want to take a chance to show you personally what it is. Let me show you the first post that I posted on Instagram that drove you all crazy. This one, I said Instagram sold 44 million blue checks in one day at $15 a check. That's $660 million that they made in one day just because y'all want to be somebody y'all not. Ooh. Now, yes, was that a little painful to hear for some of you? Yes, probably because you realize in that moment that I was calling you out for low self-esteem, daddy, mommy issues, or the fact that you haven't put in the fucking work. So people thought that that was what I was attacking. I was addressing that. But what I was really attacking was how corporations and corporate greed has taken control of the world and has preyed on the character flaws of individuals who are barely living day to day yep. to become more wealthy. Right. Facebook and Meta, Instagram just laid off 11,000 workers to cut down their workforce and save money. They then implemented this program to make $660 million in one day that they're gonna make every month off of you idiots, mm -hmm. which is gonna give them $8 billion increase in revenue per year. And on top of that, they took away the Reels program for influencers who have worked hard to earn the blue checks to be able to go and negotiate mm. deals or brands to make a living. Right. So while they've gotten this corporate greed and all of you sitting at home sleeping well with your blue check mark, you literally have just fucked up the game yep. and all the people that you know who you've looked up to. So while it's made you feel some type of way, I'm going to tell you what it's done in my mind. If I was a brand right now and somebody came into the blue check, I would do this. I would go to their profile, click their name, and see when it tells you they got verified. If it says after March 2023, I would look under the hood a little bit more. Because right, now, right. while you think you got this blue check that made you like everybody else, the motherfuckers put something in there that lets us all know when you actually got it. Right. And it looks different. 
No, it doesn't. It does. I I, I don't see any difference. In a, in a way, it does. But I don't like this at all because I've messed up the game, like, for real. Like, yeah. I'm a influencer myself that I make money from reels. It's kind of messed up that we only had it for four or five months, and then they're taking it so away. So you don't get reels anymore? Well, this is the last month, I think, yeah, that you are able month. to, like, monetize. So, so when you were doing what you thought was helping you look good to people who still aren't going to trust you, right? Because if you have 662 followers and your blue check, nobody's gonna feel like you have the influence to be any better than you were the day before you got it. Yep, and right. I feel like us, like in our industry, we we just aspire to work hard for the blue check. Yeah, right. And now that I look at it, it's so cringe. I cannot stand it, and I'm like, I don't even want it anymore. Yeah, but now like they're some, talking about they're gonna differentiate some, the color or something. Yeah, somebody like myself who wants it, I guess I could just go and pay for that. Doesn't makes me like you know. Doesn't makes me feel right. Doesn't right. make me feel like I I earn it. Like you know. Well, what I'm and let me tell you, those of you that are mad, Adam, the CEO of Instagram, follows me, so I'm sure he's even more mad than you because I've been posting more memes. I even posted this meme on Instagram just to make people more mad. Me looking at niggas with 236 followers <laughs> in a blue check. I saw that. I mean, that's really how everybody side eyeing you. And you know, a lot of you who want to feel special with the blue check are saying, "Oh, you guys are mad because now we're like you and you're not you're famous not. anymore." I'm still rich. I'm still successful. I'm still influential. You're still watching me. You're not going to be able to avoid this conversation because I'm going to keep posting more memes like this next meme I posted when I said, this is a diamond tester, though. It's a blue check tester. I'm going I love to, that one. I'm checking the blue check mark. I'm going, and the way you do the check is you go to the about profile, me. click it, and it says about this profile and it tells you when. And right when I thought, okay, three memes, I done ran everybody off, I posted this meme. Because more of y'all popped up. <laughs> you know, shout out to DJ Envy for the inspiration. He posted yeah, this yeah. and then I posted it. Well, either way, what it's now doing is it's actually creating a space that's more flawed. And I have to tell you something else that's the inside tea. We have a portal for Facebook and Instagram where we can go in and verify, merge pages, do other things, report on issues, help people who've been hacked, fix accounts, all those things. Because we've been helping Instagram and Facebook reach people who need the support. So we've been able to do this work for a long time. They're now saying this blue check allows you to have dedicated customer service. If they laid off 11,000 people when we can barely get responses, how are they helping all the 440, 44 million of y'all that got blue checks now? They, they only made a move that benefit, that Instagram benefit. Like, you know, like you say, they made that in one day. They know they're going to be able to make that in a month. And so what they're going to do, like when you say they're looking at the Reels program and they're going to take a few, they're going to they're gonna reconsider maybe another color. They're going to spend three or four months brainstorming ways of making yeah, yeah, it different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And after six months of making $660 million a month, they're going to come up with a new what plan. Know, yep, and yep. guess what? Probably less than 50% of y'all, 44 million people, will drop the badge and still be paying an additional $330 exactly. million dollars a month. It's just corporate greed. And I have to tell you, I fundamentally have an issue with white people who are able to profit off the pain or desires to be equal to or better than a people of color from all over the world. That is exactly what's happening. Because it would be one thing if you increased the Reels program and you paid more to right, creators. Right. Another thing that really bothers me is if you really were pro-creator, pro-influencer, pro-people building their business on your platforms, what you would do is allow us to pay $11.99 to subscribe to reach our entire audience. Because if I could pay eleven ninety nine a month to reach six hundred thousand followers or three point three million followers, you something. I can then go to brands and get more money to be able to. Oh, that's why you don't do it, because I would we'll be get more money, money mm -hmm. but you wouldn't. Mm -hmm. That's that's where you help really yep. benefit users. Give us tools to get the access to the full research. It's earn. just clownery. It's even like remember when we well Jamel Hill didn't air yet, but the tweets we played erase the shade and it was all blue check marks, but we didn't know anybody. Remember we were like, who well that's why I said blue check mark gang showed up. Of Twitter. Yeah, this is this is the yeah. craziest part. Well anyway, listen, um, this I think is just a move to take away from once was limited to celebrities and public figures, brands and people that have been trusted and these people who have had them like me, like Hollywood Unlocked, have been verified by people who have said you met you meet the certain criteria to be eligible. Now, if you go and look at Meta's um, page where they're defining what this blue check represents now, there's two explanations there, the old one and the new one. So mm -hmm. I'm really unclear on what it, the purpose of it is, but what I will say, on my Instagram, I said, all of you that got them, that don't need them, or maybe haven't put in the work to get them are stupid, you're still stupid. So if they make you start paying Jason, you're not gonna No, pay. absolutely. And LeBron James, yeah. shout out to him. LeBron James is one of the first people to come out and say, look, I'm not doing it, y'all can take this. Because 
it's not about entitlement. I think what people are getting wrong online is that everybody's saying, oh, these are celebrities or public figures who are feeling some type of way. No. I'm still going to wake up in the house I live in with the dogs I got, driving the cars that I drive, wearing the jewelry. My whole life is already established, and the blue check didn't get it. Right. It was the work right. that earned me the blue check that mm -hmm. got it, and that's the work that sustains. Because if they take that blue check away from you, you're still going to be a hair braider. <laughs> Period. You're still going you still gonna, you still gonna to be working wherever you're working. So what does the blue check do? The blue check makes you feel important. Well, it doesn't make you important. Anyway, done with that. Now, speaking of another topic that is important to me is um, supporting female hip hop stars like Lotto. Lotto is going to Apple Music. And it's not a new album. It's not a new song. It's not a tour. What is it? It's a radio show. Oh. oh. The Queen has a radio show. And we're not talking about Queen's radio. We're talking about Lotto's radio show over at Apple Music. Now, you know Apple used to have... Uh, a radio show called Queen's Radio. Nikki took that over to Am or Amazon, and so she's moved on. And so they've probably been looking for another hip-hop artist mm -hmm. to take that spot, and they found Lotto. Now, let's be very clear. She launched her new show, 7-7 Radio, on Apple Music. And one of her first guests, I don't know how many guests she's had, but she has uh, Chloe, Chloe Bailey, Bailey as the first uh, artist. Now, she's joining Carisha, who's over at Revolt With Me, and other rappers turned podcasters and other celebrities turned talk show hosts. Uh, she's now using her brand to go into the studio and record new podcasts that she's uploading. And on her debut episode, she had Chloe Bailey. Now, I love Chloe. Chloe, you know I love you. Yvette, Hallie, everybody over there at uh, Parkwood Media, you know that I love uh, Chloe. And I think she was a great first guest. But I have to tell you, this show has drawn a lot of criticism. It's created a lot of conversations among people and media who are saying, do these rapper singer shows make sense? And I said, well, look, I'm all for everybody getting their bag. If Lotto can get a show and do a great show, like Carisha's doing a great job over there at Revolt, get a show, right? But I also had some criticism, and I'm going to share that with you. During the conversation, uh, there were a couple things that went viral that we posted on Hollywood Unlocked that I want to share and kind of break down. Now, the first one I have a problem with because I've met Lotto. She's been on our show. She's a beautiful woman, beautiful spirit, and she's just good energy. Um, and I like her a lot. She was on the show and she was talking with her about body images and social sisterhood and other matters. But one of the viral moments included her talking about how social media has made her feel like she's older than 24 years old. And this is what she had to say. So because we're constantly in our heads, we're like, okay, well, how can I fix this? How can I make that okay? So yeah. all of our insecurities get heightened yes. because even things oh we weren't God. insecure about, people will poke on. Yeah. And like me looking old. You don't look old. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> so now That's my whole crazy. thing is, I'm, I'm going to say this without saying no names, but yeah. I'd be like, no, Key, I look like, <laughs> uh, Key, I look crazy. like old. Oh. White woman. <laughs> I can't, but that's the things have been going through her head. It is, and, and it's all because of social media, though. Yes. It really is. Like, and you know, I can't say all. Yeah. It just, like you said, mm -hmm. heightens your insecurity. And makes up new ones. It makes up new ones. Because like, I never thought I looked old until I read it on internet. And I no. just think I look like old oh, white woman. I can promise you, you don't look old. I... Didn't understand where that came from. I've met Lotto several times. Uh, I think she's beautiful. I think she looks mature. I wouldn't say she looks old. Uh, but here's what some of the fans had to say online. This fan said, I can assure you Chloe was lying to her. Indeed, you do look like an old white woman. Another person said she absolutely looks 30 to 33 years old and not 24. And another person said Lotto looks old and Chloe's still cringy as fuck. What's next? I, I, I... I heard you, and just Lotto, just so you know, it ain't me saying that, it's them. But I also saw other people, just to be fair, who had a lot to say. These fans said this. Anyone who says Lotto looks old is lying. She's a gorgeous woman who looks her age. Another person said, y'all really think Lotto look old or y'all hating? I think she's bad as fuck. Let me ask y'all. Do you think Lotto looks old? They hating. They're hating, but she she looks she has a mature look, but she yeah. doesn't look old. Sure. She just looks mature. Like mm -hmm. it's like, come on now. She every girl looks like a young girl until they put the makeup on, the hair, the eyelashes, mm -hmm. and it looks she looks gorgeous, but she just looks more like like a, a vixen instead of like a little girl. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. that's, that's I mean, I she's it. not she's not a little girl. She's, yeah, she's 24. 24. She's a woman. Yeah, but so so do you think people are hating? Yeah. People are hating. I, I agree. I feel like makeup adds on. and She's always glammed up, so she looks older. I do think she looks older than 24, but Lotto is bad. Yeah. I think Lotto's bad. 
and people just want to hate. But to me, Chloe also looks older than her age. Chloe's also 24. Mm. But to me, she's yeah, older than 24. That. Well, and let's be very clear. These women have embraced their bodies. They have yep. no problem showing off their body and no, yeah. no problem making you respect their body. And yep. I just feel like criticizing her and saying she looks old is just being a plain hater. Uh, Lotto, I think you're beautiful. I've not, I've seen you out several times coming in the studio. You've always looked phenomenal. Social media, you look great. Um, I don't think you look like an old white woman. There was something that you said in that that made me also think of who's calling you that. Now, I'm not going to say anything because there's been a lot of colorism thrown uh, all around the internet when it comes to her because of people she's been into it with. And I'm not going to go down that slippery slope because I don't want to end up in another fight of my own. I'm not getting in girl beef no more. That's y'all. Y'all got what y'all got going on. But Lotto, I don't think that you look old. But I will take uh, an issue with something that you did say on your show. And this was another moment that we posted over on Hollywood Unlocked. You asked Chloe about a conversation about her allegedly, let me use the button. Allegedly. Smashing Quavo. Now, I own a whole platform where we talk about what people are saying. Did you hear something about Chloe smashing Quavo? Did y'all hear that? Mm -hmm. You heard it? Mm -hmm. Where? I heard it on vlogs. Where? I'm just saying they were smashing. You heard that? No, I was just seeing the photos of them, and then it's because yeah. of the moon. Did yeah. you hear people no, no, no. reporting on them having sex? No. I just Did seen you? the pictures. No, no, and you heard people saying her, they were having sex. Her and then Gunna also, there was talks of her being reported. Her and Gunna was yeah, a that thing. Was, that was a thing. That, that was, was a thing that thing. we saw. Yeah. But you heard that she was in a relationship with Quavo. Not a relationship. I heard that they were... I know together. Quavo personally, and I know Chloe personally. I never heard that, and I never saw us report on that. This is the conversation that Lotto had with Chloe Bailey, the sister to the Little Mermaid. Listen. <laughs> but T was that, What's the tea? that you was talking to Quavo. Uh oh. Well, we doing a movie together. But they were saying that John was hanging out. Uh oh. Hmm. Well, who said that? I don't know. Why the hell would you say that? I don't know where that came from. Hello? Yeah, working. Yes. Flirting, working. Working. He's a really nice guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's nice. I mean, he got dreads. Yeah, you I like, like his dress. locks. I like his locks. Yeah. Here's the issue I have with that. Lotto, I love you. I love you. I love you. And this is where y'all say I be starting stuff and being messy, but I just got to shoot it straight from the hips. You got mad at Hollywood Unlocked. Alle I'll say allegedly. Allegedly. When we posted this photo on Hollywood Unlocked, and this was a photo from behind your ear where it says Savage, right? It says Savage, 21 Savage. Or it says his name. It says his name, which was 21 Savage. People were saying that you and him are in a relationship, allegedly. And then it started a whole conversation online because he's married and people thought he was married to stay in this country because in order to not get deported, you gotta be married or go through the pathway of citizenship mm -hmm. that you are, right? And then people were posting it and went viral. And then I started getting calls from your team saying that you, you allegedly wanted to pay me to take it off of Hollywood Unlocked. And I wasn't going to remove it, but I asked my team to check to see if anybody else had posted. Although I think we posted it first, everybody started posting it. And then it became a thing where I think then she got, from what I understand, was unhappy with us not taking it down because no calls had been returned. I reached out to her team. We had a conversation about it or whatever. And so to go and then ask Chloe if she was allegedly in a sexual relationship with Quavo, asking the T, how can you do a show and be legitimate as a show person when you don't want your own tea spilled and won't own up to sip your own tea. And so that's the issue that I have with celebrities doing this thing. I don't sing because I can't hold a note. I don't rap because I can't remember rhymes. I don't act because I can't remember lines. I shoot from the hip and spill the tea because that's what God gave me the gift to do. I am tired of reality of uh, celebrities getting shows and wanting to get into the talk or tea space, and they ain't ready to talk. Jennifer Hudson over there singing us to death, Lotto spill, sipping tea but not spilling it. What's happening? I feel that they see the popularity, they see the bags attached, they see that the brands are coming after these podcasts, so they want in on the success. Like I'm not mad at it, but it's like, you know, you got a team. Like, hey, what else could we do to get a couple extra da 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 for this year? Easy podcast. So, but they don't. the The bad part about that is, you know, there are people who actually study this. People who actually like, you know. Get... Let, let me first start by saying I watched the entire film that her and Quavo did together because they sent me advance access, Universal Films, correct? I watched or, it too. Or whoever the film company is. This. From who? 
Praise This. The, the movie's called Praise This that they star in. He plays a rapper. She plays a singer. I'm gonna, I'm not going to promote it because Chloe's coming on my show to actually talk about it at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'll let them do that there. But they actually are in a movie together. A little bit of research. If you're in this industry, you would have been able to do that. But that's mm-hmm. why I say to all of you that are trying, get your bags. I'm not mad at it. But for those of you who are singers, rappers, actors, or whatever, in getting in the talk space, if you get in this space that's already overcrowded and you're not able to do the job right, I'm going to talk about it. Uh, I think Lotto should stick to music. I think she should focus on acting, maybe put out a beauty line, maybe put out a uh, you know, clothing line, or uh, maybe a, uh, do, a, do, a, do a, she can't even do a, re- a re- relationship-based re- uh, show. She can't because she doesn't want to own the relationship that she's allegedly in. If I was Chloe, I would have hit her right back with What About You in 21. That's I would have hit her right, right immediately. That's why I love when Giervo was on, shout out to Chicago, when Giervo was on Carisha and she, Carisha asked him about ta, uh, Taina and Ari, he was like, well, what about you and Diddy? Like, he flipped it back on her. Yeah, and which I was, was a fun key, moment. Quit. Yes, that was Quit. viral. It was beautiful. And I low-key wish that happened because I don't mind Lotto doing the show. Like, in six days, it got over 200,000 views. But... Don't ask questions if you don't want to give the answers to your own. Right. You can't okay. sip tea or you can't spill tea if you're not willing to share your own. Correct. I'm an open book. There are so many people out there trying to find the tea on me. Everything I do, I put out there. I literally just yesterday, a friend of mine called me, a friend, not even somebody I'm sexually involved with, called me to tell me that somebody was trying to pay him to interview him about us having sex. We ain't even had sex. I'm like, y'all really trying to manufacture the tea? Like, what we need to do at this point is just knock it off. Lotto, this was a this was a L that you have to take, and it doesn't stand for Lotto. It stands for loss. Uh, but I also hope it stands for a lesson. I could have gave you pointers, but you're mad at me because I was spilling the tea about you dating that boy down there in Atlanta. Now, look, 21 Savage, I don't want no issues with guns. I know you've had issues in the past with guns. You almost got kicked up out of here. I will call the FBI. But I want to be an ally to you. I want you to come on the Jason Lee Show and tell me if you and Lotto are getting it on. All right, look, I don't know. Um... It's just uh, not a good Ooh. idea for singers to continue to have these shows. You know, these shows come and go. They're really, people in the talk space, if you don't understand, with Wendy and Ellen leaving, it's really fragile right now. Yes. And I'll tell you, those of you that have been following my career, you know that I wanted a daytime talk show for a long time. I have since abandoned the idea of daytime talk. I, mm-hmm. I, I had to reconcile with the fact that I'm not willing to play the game, and I don't believe that TV is where it's at anymore. It's all right here online. We can reach thousands and thousands of people just by doing a show right here in the in the what the the space that we created. All the talk show hosts they want what you have. But right. yeah. well, how about if the brands is the one who targeting the artists? Say it again. How about if it's the brands who come arts after the artists? Like you know they offer her that no. podcast. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. I'm it's not a, a I'm not a hater. Like Mary J. Blige has a show. Mary mm-hmm. J. Blige is not known for opening up about her personal life. Mary J. Blige has a documentary that's phenomenal. I love and enjoy it. I've watched it twice. Everybody, if you haven't seen Mary J. Blige's documentary, go watch it. But a talk show host has to be willing to strip down the veil that they built up as a brand to let the audience feel like they know them. The reason why you guys keep tuning in for me, wherever I go, like Instagram, Bego, Facebook Live, uh, wherever I'm at, podcast, TV show, the reason why you show for me is because you know that I'm in it and I'm going to say it how I see it. You may not like it. You may love it. You may enjoy it. You may laugh. You may cry. But you know it's going to be what I think and I'm going to be unapologetic about it. I think that Lotto is phenomenal a lot of things. I've supported her. And I'll say this, and people will be surprised. Nicki Minaj did it right in the sense of, in the sense of she said what she felt. She, no, 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 and I'm not, you know, because people, no matter if I say something good or bad about Nicki Minaj, it's I'm either sucking her pussy or I'm either a fucking hater. So, like, let's just be very clear. I'm going to give her her props when she deserves it. I think that she weaponized the platform to attack girls when it was convenient or attack Joe Budden or me or whoever. But in terms of getting off what she felt and saying what she thought, she had no problem doing that. And when she had guests like Joe Budden on her show challenging her, she went toe to toe with Joe, even though she turned his mic off. <laughs> uh, you know, she went toe to toe with him, and I feel like if you're gonna do it, then you have to be able to have that, keep that same energy. Mm-hmm. And so I think that Nikki did it somewhat right. I think also consider your guests. When you have a guest like a Chloe Bailey, who's not known for messy shit, no, no. I don't think it's fair to be messy with her. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, because it's like it's like trying to pull something out of somebody that's not there. You know, because even when they're talking. Which I'm not shading any with the podcast. I'm just saying, like, as a critic to people, who, a person who watches podcasts, 
it has to be a certain dynamic, you know? And like you say something like fill the room. Like, I don't think the room was really felt because a lot of it was just like awkward. You know, it was, it was just awkward. That's what they were like, oh, I'm yeah. awkward. Yeah, it was a little awkward, you know? And I love it both of them. Like, I listen to a lot of music. I mm -hmm. love Chloe. I love both of them. But, you know, sometimes stay in your, stay in your gift. But you can, you know, if I thought, first of all, if I thought they were together, I would have called Quavo to say, are you and Chloe your thing? Because I can tell you, I've seen Karuchi standing with Quavo. No, no I'm just saying. <laughs> But but I mean I but was that's because but, you have those axes like not I people can the see they hear stuff can't. everybody everybody in this industry do you do you follow Ice Spice? No, I actually don't. Do you know who Ice Spice is? Yeah. Do you follow Twitter? Yeah. In social media? Yeah. Do you see that Ice Spice and Lotto have a beef going on? Mm -hmm. You yeah. see it right? Mm -hmm. I I ain't reported that on Hollywood a lot. Why? Because I don't want to get in the fight. I want to see both of those young women make it. Right. They both deserve to make it. Ice Spice, the fans. Is, Ice Spice is killing the game right now. No, it's them too, because they're both throwing shots. Oh, go, go, Anytime go, go, go. Ice Spice right. want to get hers off, she plays a Nicki Minaj song. Then all the barbs go over and attack Lotto. Then Lotto, then there's a whole bunch of things. But the point of what I'm saying is I don't even bring, I guess I did just bring it up. I don't even bring <laughs> up the beef because I don't want to see these women in hip hop fighting. Right. The fighting among the women in hip hop is ruining hip hop for women. Yeah. It is. So, so, and I've, there's a whole article on it of me saying, Jason Lee said women beefing in hip hop is ruining hip hop. You can go check it out. So I, I just, in many ways, I want to see Lotto win. I actually took a day to call her team to say, hey, if she's upset because I didn't take a post down and I didn't let her pay me to take it down because they offered to pay me money to take the post down, I'm not going to let you take away the legitimacy of my platform by paying me to take a post down. Now, the last time I told this truth, I pissed Koi Larea off because I told you she didn't want to come on my show after I had Blueface and Krishan because she had been with Blueface and Krishan said she was going to beat that ass. Oh. I didn't even put out the phone call that we had after I said that because I want to move on. I've elevated. I sip cappuccino now, remember? But either way, uh, Lotto, you got to do better. Uh, I would have asked her what she thinks about white people thinking her sister wasn't good enough to be a mermaid. That right there would have went viral because we still haven't heard from Chloe what she thinks about her sister being discriminated against. That's me giving you free game. That's how I would have got my viral moment. Everybody would have picked it up. All the white people, all black people, everybody picked it up. Well, she missed an opportunity. The thing that made the headlines about her sister was just about DBG. She asked her about DBG, not really about the area. But I mean, how yeah. does that build another black that's woman up? That's what I'm up? saying. Right, right. It was all about relationships. So the tea spiller that's... Tearing down black women would actually use it as a platform to prop up another black woman. Just saying. All right, cool. Bye, Lotto. Oh my God. Ooh. It's getting hot in the studio. I'm really, it's I'm a little warm. Saying, like, I'm like, is it me? Or is it yeah, hot in here? It's a little warm. All right, so listen, this next topic is something that is just dominating the headlines, and we put this all over Hollywood Unlocked. It's LSU's Angel Reese, and she's a champ. I'm going to give her a round of applause. So uh, the LSU Tigers, uh, this is the star here, Angel Reese. She's a champion and a hero for black and brown girls everywhere because she's standing up for them. She recently went viral for an incident during the LSU championship game against Iowa State and the Hawkeyes when they defeated them. Now, last weekend, the two women's basketball teams went head to head and uh, LSU beat Iowa 102 to 85 mm -hmm. and they won their first ever national championship now what Amazing. what now what went viral isn't the fact that they won the game what went viral was actually what happened in the game during the game angel reese went viral for taunting this woman who played on iowa's team named caitlin clark <laughs> now caitlin is a white girl and caitlin was doing this thing it's basically called the you can't see me pose uh, where she's doing this thing like this right now okay. caitlin had done it at another game where they defeated another team and then Angel, she did it in this game with Caitlyn, and she was pointing to her finger because she said they were going to get the ring, and they eventually won. Social media went hilarious. I mean, it went hilarious. It went hysterical. This is a photo of Angel mocking Caitlyn, just for those of you who were watching, okay? <laughs> I mean... It's the ring pointing for me. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, but it's also competitive sport. It's basketball. Mm -hmm. yeah. So she did that. Side note. We were at brunch this past Sunday and ran into Stephen A. Smith, and I thought, what if a fight would have broke out right there? Because you know he attacked Rihanna, and I told Rico, if we get in a fight, start filming this, because it's going to go. Anyway, hey, Stephen A., I didn't speak to you because oh, I was in a bad space that day, but anyway, whatever. Back to, back to Angel. Uh, <laughs> social media uh, labeled Angel a classless person over this incident, and people were saying she was ghetto and, and all of that. And I think at the time, because people don't really pay attention to social media, things happen here and there, you don't know what's going on. They forgot that Caitlyn actually did it first. Mm -hmm. 
So that's the beauty of this whole thing, that the fact that Caitlyn had done it first, and I'm going to show you a picture here for those of you watching of Caitlyn doing it. She uh, had done it first. Right. Okay? And people on social media called them out. One person said, a lot of people big mad on Angel Reese hitting Caitlyn Clark with the can't see me move. Didn't see that same energy when Clark did it versus Louisville. So the receipts are out there. People online have found them. Now, after beating Iowa, Angel called out the double standard during her post-game press conference, and this is what she had to say. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I mean... All year, I was critiqued about who I was. Nobody, I don't, yeah, yeah, the narrative, I don't fit the narrative. I don't fit in the box that y'all want me to be in. I'm too hood, I'm too ghetto. Y'all told me that all year. But when other people do it, y'all don't say nothing. So this was for the girls that look like me, that gonna, that's gonna speak up on what they, they believe in. It's unapologetically you. And that's what I did it for tonight. This was for the more than, it was bigger than me tonight. It was bigger than me. Twitter is gonna go in a rage every time. And I mean, I'm, I'm happy. I feel like I've grown, helped grow women's basketball this year. I'm super happy and excited. So I'm looking forward to celebrating in the next season. Angel, you did that. You don't owe nobody an explanation. I'm give you a round of applause. Amazing. And what I love is that you didn't make the moment about you. You made the moment about all black women who were labeled the angry black girl, the messy ghetto yeah. black girl, the hood black girl. And I love that you're addressing this issue for you and for them in a way that resonates with us. Because you could be doing this in a way to appeal to white people and educating them, but what you're doing it is you're creating a space to advocate for us in a way that they can understand probably not digest completely because it is so real, but you're also doing it with grace and class. And yep. I've been watching this yep. because not only did you say that at the press conference, but you followed up with your comments by tweeting. And this is what you said on Twitter that I wanted to share with people. You said, I love being a black queen and no, I'm not keeping it cute <laughs> with the kiss emoji. You also said this to the haters. One, one of the person said, Angel represents the generation of young athletes who don't care what nobody talk about. Y'all gonna be mad forever because it's more coming. She says, I don't care about none. Now, listen, I love it. I live for it. I think you are doing it with class and grace. Um, and I don't think you owe any further explanation for it. Did you guys see everybody online talking about it? Yeah, definitely. She did it exactly how it should have been done. Like, it was just so classy. So it was enough class and pettiness, just like a perfect balance for me. That's I, what I, sport That's what sport is about, though. It is. Right. It's about shit talking. And I love that, like, she yeah. basically stay double down she had a spine and she was like no i did what i did and i'll do mm -hmm. it again like i love That's how right. she's standing on it because i feel like it's a lot of pressure now to like apologize and blah 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 but my thing is like it's sad like we're black women like for angel and shakari richardson they're always you know putting shakari in headlines for getting kicked out of the american airlines flight for you know acting some type of way instead of talking about that she's a crazy athlete like she's mm -hmm. really good mm -hmm. and angel's crazy great, good crazy, crazy. Good, yeah, sorry. Yeah. But Angel's a killer basketball player, but everyone's still just trying to talk shit instead of just being like, celebrate her. Right. She's that girl. Well, listen, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what made it even worse. Um, it isn't just the fact that um, you know this happened and that social media and everybody in the world was creating the double standard and that she had to live in and address it. Um, but it was the fact that the, the first lady of the United States, Jill Biden was there at the game and she began trending after she invited LSU and Iowa, the losing team, to go to the White House to celebrate uh, LSU's win. Now, that was crazy. Now, I will tell you, since I've met Jill Biden, uh, that, you know, she probably was thinking, like, how do we bring the girls together? Because that's what she said after she saw the reaction from everybody. But even then, we need you to figure out how to bring the White House closer to the black community. Mm -hmm. we, need to, we need you to figure out, Jill, how to bring the Black House into the White House for more than tea and crumpets, more than sugar cookies and Christmas carols. We need you to build a deeper relationship with the Black community, not just decorate the White House or the administration with Blacks, mm -hmm. but actually understand how we talk. This is a clear example of how the administration fails to understand that by bringing in the white folks who lost when there's a big issue in debate over race, slights the Black folks. Mm -hmm. Now, what I love about that, um, and again, Angel and her teammates, um, I can't even say the girl's name, but Johnson and Alexis Morris spoke out about it. And this is uh, what they had to say on Twitter. This is a joke. If we lost, would we have been invited? That's all I'm asking. And Michelle Obama, we can still, the LSU champs, come celebrate our win at Joe House. <laughs> I love that one. Because mm -hmm. it became a racial thing when it should have, and they want to be with their people. Yeah. Right, and it's like, since when does the loser get a prize? Yeah, that's... Like, come on, that's what winning is about. It's because mm -hmm. you want to separate yourself. So you want to be a winner because everyone doesn't win. That's the reality. 
That's well, the tradition of when teams win, they go to the White House. To, okay. That's the tradition of the winning team. So winning baseball team will be invited, the winning NBA champs, the end of the right. Super Bowl champs, they get invited by the president if they want to, to come to the White House, they do a picture and all that kind of thing to celebrate them. And again, you know, these American sports are our sports right. that is part of the whole American heritage that the White House is trying to connect to. This was a case of Jill the first lady trying to connect two groups of people that have inherent issues. You know, on the Jason Lee show, when I asked Amanda uh, Seals about what she thinks about Kamala Harris, she had a lot to say, including this. Take a look. When it comes to Kamala, I mean, listen, my, you know, when Kamala said this ain't a racist country, she lost me and right. she ain't got me back yet. Mm -hmm. And not that that matters. I'm just little Amanda. Mm -hmm. You know, she didn't want to know in the White House. Mm -hmm. But I, I, th that, ooh, child. That one right there. Well, we all know we're in a racist America. She has to know that she's in a racist America. Do you think that that was her speaking to the hopes of not wanting to live in a she racist America? She can't do that. Right. We have shooters that are going into places and killing people because of their race. Mm -hmm. And then we're not calling it domestic terrorism. We have an entire culture of police that are killing black people and getting away with it because the law says they can. We have a country that was 1000% built on the foundation of racism that now legislators are trying to pretend didn't happen and are getting that through and doing it on an education level and on a DEI level. You cannot, as the second in line to the highest form of office in this country, make a message on hope. Mm -hmm. You, in my opinion, is particularly not just as vice president, but as the first black woman vice president and who got there and who got this man elected largely in part because black women like myself were like, let's do what we always do. Mm -hmm. Let's show up. You can't get in there in that position and then make such an egregiously false statement. And the fact is, is that this administration, if this kind of like underscores what Amanda's saying, that they need to understand that racism in America is a real thing. Yeah. And this is an example where, Jill, you didn't create the problem, but this goes back to that book I keep telling people to read, When Helping Hurts. You were trying to help by bringing mm -hmm. people together right. and you actually hurt them. Now, this is what uh, Jill Biden, look at this photo of Jill Biden. The press secretary for Jill Biden on her comments inviting Iowa's women's basketball team. Her comments in Colorado were intended to applaud the historic game and all women athletes. She looks forward to celebrating the LSU Tigers on their championship win at the White House. And Chris Williamson, who has a blue check, which I don't know if he bought it or not, said, your apology should be as loud as your disrespect was. Mm. Now, Angel's not accepting it. She don't care. She, she uh, went on the Paper Route podcast. And this is what she said, Jesus. Even the, the whole White House thing, did you sit back with your team before you responded to it? Because a lot of people loved exactly how you showed up was that, did you have people sitting around and like, hey, look, you know, how should we respond No, that to this? was from the heart. That was from the, the, the mind. It was that, that was yeah. what it was in the moment. I mean, as soon as that happened, we hit the group chat, like, what we doing? Mm. Y'all y'all trying to go? Like what? Cause if y'all, y'all don't, we not going, we not going. And our, my coach, she's, she's telling us, just be patient, she got this. And that's mm. why she came out with that statement this morning. We made a couple, a, a lot of phone calls. And that's why she wants to come out and apologize. But at the same time, the damage is I done. Don't, Except the, I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't accept the apology because mm. of you Jill, said what you Jill said. Biden. Yeah, first the, lady, the first wife. Lady. Yeah, you said first what you lady. said and you, you meant. What I you said what I said, and like yeah. you can't go back on certain things that you you say. I mean, you felt like they they should have came because of sportsmanship, right? They can have that spot. Like we'll go to the Obamas. We'll we'll, we'll see, <laughs> I'm gonna see Michelle. The, I'm gonna see Barack. Oh. Now, Barack and Michelle have not responded to the request to go to their house. And in fact, I doubt they want anybody in their house because they're enjoying their downtime. Well, listen, Angel Reese, you are a champ. You did that. You're a champion not only for women's basketball, but you're also a champion for black women and women everywhere. But I have to say this. We followed you at Hollywood a lot because what I love is your fearlessness. But now that the spotlight is on you, they're going to be watching you and they're going to be waiting for your downfall so they can tear your ass apart. But we got your back. All right. And now it's time for... The deep dive.
All right, well, listen, we got to get into something that went down this week, and that is the complex uh, hip hop media power ranking list that just came out. And we made it. Congratulations. Now, Deep Dive is a segment where we're going to break down the trending topic. And or if we have a guest, we'll get into their tea or whatever they want to, or whatever's trending at the time, because we want to deep dive into what's going on. Deep dive or dive deep, whatever. We want to get into some things, all right? But on today's show, we're going to be breaking down Complex's hip hop media power ranking list. Now, yours truly was featured at number 11, uh, which, you know, uh, I don't know. What do you think? Close to 10. It's huge. Yeah. Uh, that's I mean, big. you on the list. Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're 11, for sure. but not number 11. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, I was number 11. But not number 11. What does that mean? You're 11, but not number 11. So you get it like, she said I'm two, but I'm not. She was number two, but she really is not number two. She's number one. Who so said that? Like Beyonce. You don't get it? Like you're 11, but not number 11? Never mind. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Y'all can read Cricket. I step on cricket. Wow. Okay, listen. Um, okay. I don't know what... <laughs> Because if for, somebody for, out there is going to make for sense those to watching, them. for those watching, okay, you're listening on the podcast. Please continue to promote this everywhere you're listening. But for those of you who are listening, please jump over to YouTube and look at Rico's side eye as he was explaining the two is the number one. Because Rico, I know you were confused, right? Rico, yeah, because I. It's okay. I was, I was confused too. All right. Well, look, here's the full list. Let me go through them starting at number 25. We had Young Jazzy, who's a young girl who's out there killing it. Shout out to you, Jazzy. I'll be seeing you moving. You had Nyla Simone, number 24. You had Sway, number 23. You had Nardwar, number 22. You had Anthony Fantano at number 21. Nadeska Alexis at 20. You had Adam 22 at number 19. Big Boy at number 18. You had Brandon Jinx Jenkins at number 17. Peter Rosenberg <coughs> at number 16. You have Funkmaster Flex at number 15. Angela Yee at number 14. You had Ebra at number 13. Angie Martinez, the icon, at number 12. You had yours truly at number 11. Math Hoffa at number 10. Then you had DJ Vlad at number 9. Elliot Wilson at number 8. Carisha at number 7. Kai Sinet at number 6. Nori at number 5. Gillian Wallow at number 4. Charlemagne the God at number 3. DJ Academics at number 2. And number 1... Joe Biden. Clap for everybody on the list. They on the list. Stand up, Jersey City. Now, we had a whole live chat over at Complex on Twitter Spaces uh, when this list came out. And they wanted my opinion. And here's the deal. I, I kind of jokingly said, why am I here when the top 10 people aren't even here? You know, like, I'm number 11. You was number one through 10 not available, so you went to number 11, but it was good that they actually asked me to be a part of it. And I think they did that because they knew I would be honest. And I sh shout out to Aria Hughes, who's uh, in the leadership over there, and the general manager who were in the chat, because I think they wanted to hear what people's thoughts on that were. And I really appreciate that they stayed for the entire conversation. And I was very honest, but I want to be more honest here today because after I've been able to sit with the list, I want to go through it and check out exactly who was honored and whatever. Now, I looked at the list and I have to tell you, I had a problem fundamentally with Charlemagne being uh, as, as low as he was on the list. Charlemagne, in my opinion, should have been the most influential on the hip hop media ranking because not only did he do radio in the Wendy Williams era, not only has he had a successful run at the uh, Breakfast Club and building a show and sustaining the entire 10 or, 10 or whatever years of the show and becoming a part of Radio, hip -hop, uh, radio Hall of Fame, He's been able to cross over in mainstream media. He's been able to have influence over in politics. He had his own cable vision show. He built out a podcast network of a bunch of hip hop uh, podcasters. He has a hip hop. He has a podcast festival that's getting ready to launch. He helped get me on national radio. Uh, he's been an integral part in developing so many platforms for people of color that I just didn't understand that. But that's not to slight Joe, because Joe, I think, also is self-made. He's been able to have successful partnerships with Spotify, with Complex and others to be able to establish the Joe Budden show on the Joe Budden platform. He has a big deal over at Patreon. So Joe is killing it too. And so I, I don't want to take away from Joe's contribution because I think he deserves to be there for sure. But I, but I have to say Charlemagne not being number one for me was problematic. Also, how, the, how do you have Peter Rosenberg 
who I've said, you know, I, I don't have an issue with Peter anymore. I've moved on. But on Drink Champs, I was very clear. Somebody who has criticized the culture, who actually disrespected Kelly Rowland by saying in an interview with her that she was standing in Beyonce's shadow, um, who's repeatedly called out culture dis disruptors like me for being messy when he's messy. Uh, how does he make the list before DJ Envy, who's had equal success to Charlemagne in impact and culture in, in hip hop radio? I don't know. It didn't make sense. And I absolutely did not understand how Angie Martinez, who's iconic, who's had an iconic run in radio all the way from Hot 97 to Power 105, who's had the Angie Martinez show for years, who just dropped IRL, her own podcast that she owns, where she's getting huge interviews that we're picking up on a consistent basis at Hollywood Unlocked and how she fell behind Carisha. Carisha's show is good, and Carisha is a hip-hop star, and I know she appeals to Complex, but in terms of influence of hip-hop media... I don't know that Carisha should have been on that list, although I want to congratulate her for being on the list because, again, she does have a hit show ever at Revolt. And uh, I love sharing the space with her, and I'm in, I'm trying to get her on my show, and I don't know if I'd ever be on her show because I don't want to talk about sex. But either way, I think Carisha's doing her thing. But when you talk about hip-hop media power ranking and you have legends like Sway at 24 and Angie Martinez at 12, I don't know. It was um, it was one of those things where I have to say, first of all, thank you, Complex, for putting me on a list and acknowledging all the work that all of us are doing because everybody you put on there is doing some work in hip-hop media. But when you talk about power ranking and power influence, I don't know if they cut the mark. Yeah. I feel like they were putting them in base of like how much noises they were making during the year. Because mm -hmm. like you said, you spoke a lot of stuff about Charlamagne, about people that I didn't know any of. Like, you know, so I don't think there were putting them in there based by the history and stuff like that. It's like, for example, and the, I'll say in the past two or three years, you will see like Joe Bowden, you will see uh, Carisha, like right now this year's trending, all her shows is trending. Um, those those other people, like for example, uh, Kai Sinat, he, he was six. He has, with them last year and this year, he has made a, you know, a huge noise. So I feel like they put him in there, like based on that, like, you know, how the internet works. Not like, how you're seeing. That's my point of view. I'm just be honest, half those people, I didn't even know who they were. So like, I just felt like that was disrespectful because when I think of influence, like what you said was very valid and I agree with that to a certain extent, but you can't take away what somebody did in the, like to be influenced, you had to be influential at some point throughout your whole career, I believe. But like Charlemagne should be number one. I don't understand how Angie was twelve and like they just played Sway because like Sway is so influential. And no disrespect, and this is no ego. Right. I don't understand how I was number eleven. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> how I'm not in the top ten. I've had some of the biggest trendiest right. stories yeah, in cool. the last few years, um, and I built a fifty million dollar company that I own. I don't see the other thing that makes it challenging is that within this list you have some people who work for corporate companies where they have mm -hmm. bookers agents you know publicists a whole marketing team marketing dollars and all that behind the marketing then you have people like me or or the um uh, the guy from uh twitch what's his name okay kai Sinat. kai Sinat, who i see i see visibly doing oh, things yeah, yeah. um and killing on social media and on the internet getting great interviews with some of the biggest celebrities too, who I can see and understand who's on there. Academics who started his own company, who's who goes viral all day long every day. Okay. And I said to the people on Complex, I could go viral every day, all day, if I went on Instagram every day. I just choose not to because right. I do it where it makes sense on my shows, right? Um, I don't know. It was very interesting. I understand that some of the other platforms like Shea Room and Ball Alert or, or, or those folks weren't included because they didn't include them as personalities. But I also understand generationally it was taken into consideration of what's hot right now. Yeah. But I think then there should have been a time period cap mm -hmm. where you just say like right now the last year. <laughs> Not because to I, put Angie I, I Martinez I number 12... Um, to put big boy was at the bottom to put Sway um to, to put sway at number 24 insane. i don't know it's, i i, I, I thought it was i thought it was i thought it was a political thing that that was tailored to the audience that complex is complex serves but then again it's their platform it's their list so i don't know i i feel like for the heavy hitters and like the ogs like that it was a little disrespectful but at the same time i think that they gave people flowers and hip-hop who don't normally get them like my favorite is nardwar 
Nardwar is that guy. Like, if you know, you know. Nadeska, she does great stuff. Like, I love her interviews too. And DJ Vlad, I feel like, does all like low key up and coming artists, and he doesn't get his flowers either. Like, I thought that that was good, but I'm not just saying this because I'm an employee. But I thought that you were 11 was low. Yeah. For you. Yeah, 11 is a lucky number. I was. I'm. I'm thankful for being on the list. I don't want to be a hater and say who didn't deserve to be in whatever. A lot of people are saying that Adam 22 shouldn't have been on the list because he has allegations of uh, sexual assault or different things. Allegedly, I don't know. I'm not in the weeds of that. But they did put a, a fact sheet on there that said they weren't they weren't judging the people based on personal stuff. It was based on their influence. Right. And you have to say Adam 22 and what he's done in No Jumper is phenomenal. He right. has a lot of influence and impact over there. And the fact that he's a self-made boss. I mean, you can't turn off the lights over there unless yeah. you go to jail, which we <laughs> hope you don't. But um, no, yeah. I, I, I fundamentally um, think that it's great that they're acknowledging hip hop media's uh, hip hop media's influence mm -hmm. uh noriega deserves to be where he is on the list um you know and joe and everybody on there just does deserve to be on this i don't believe peter rosenberg deserves to be on there because ebro is on there and it is the ebro in the morning show ebro has a show over at apple ebro has been in hip-hop radio since i knew him back in sacramento and even though he, ebro and i may not have necessarily we're not on the same you know we're not in each other's worlds like that in terms of like friends or anything uh, and I have no, no, I don't owe him anything, but I think that Ebro being on the list makes sense. I mean, yeah, he's holding yeah, down definitely. Apple Music and Apple Radio. Mm -hmm. He's holding down Hot 97. Um, he has to go to work with Peter Rosenberg every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I, I personally didn't understand that one. I don't understand why DJ Envy wasn't there. Angelie was on there. Congratulations to her. Congratulations to everybody else. And I love the fact that it was inclusive. Like Nyla Simone is a new upcoming person. Some will argue that she hasn't put in enough work yet to be there, but she's also showing up on... Uh, Breakfast Club. I saw a clip from her the other day where she was holding it down and giving her debate on music. So she's paying attention. I went on her podcast, uh, which was really fun. I had to tell her, don't be afraid to, you know, spill my tea or do whatever. So I think Nala sure. Simone, she's a young DJ interviewer who's doing her thing and she's somebody you should watch. But I also think, don't call me white girl. Mona should have been up there. I think Mona's yeah, making funny. noise right now. She's funny. Mm -hmm. She's messy in a comedic way. And she she's talking to the hood. Wallow and Gilly deserve to be up there. So anyway, shout out to everybody who made yeah. it on the list. Um, but uh, after the list was released and after we did the, the whole Twitter space thing, Aria, who's over there uh, in the executive team at Complex, posted this on her Instagram story about why the City Girls rapper Karisha was placed higher on the list. She said, and people seem to have questions about why Karisha was higher than others on the list. I think people don't take into account that Complex is a youth culture publication. And the list is also from the perspective of our very young audience who connects with Karisha in a big way. Speak like her, use her sayings in captions, trust what she says. This isn't about caliber of journalism or journalists. It's about who captures the most attention, whose moments are circulated widely, etc. Also, I love her interview style. She's there to get down to business. She's funny. And she also has some very introspective moments with her guests about love, life, losing the father of her child, etc. It's very honest. I appreciate that. Now... After seeing that, I say Carisha deserve, deserve to be on this. Cause she did, I mean, yeah. number seven, Carisha, please. But <laughs> that was a play on words. I need a Carisha, please. That actually. was a play on words because that's her show. Right. I want the drink. <laughs> I want the drink. Well, her show is actually funny. Carisha, you know, I love you so much. And I, I will say, on a personal note, Carisha is actually one of the nicest new girls on the block. She's not new, new like the new, new, new girls. But Carisha, when I got my show at Revolt and everybody was like, oh, Carisha's better than Jason Lee's show or Jason Lee's better than Carisha, she, t she called me, FaceTimed me without makeup on, she was getting her makeup done, to say, congratulations on your show, I'm happy for you. So, Carisha, I'm gonna give you a round of applause. Big up, big up. That's love. I love Carisha, I love Carisha. City, girl. Love city, Carisha. Girl. Nah, city, girl. city oh. Boys is about when I'm in therapy. Bye. That I couldn't wait to get to, it's Thoughts and Prayers. Thoughts and Prayers is going to be my weekly sign-off where I give you my final thought and prayers that y'all can digest at one soundbite at a time. This week had many highs for some, and for a lot of us, it was a pure drag. Speaking of drag, RuPaul proved that if you can put lipstick on a pig, you can put a wig on a teddy bear. Yeah, not even I bought into that bullshit. Women's basketball players have been fighting for equality for decades. Whether it's fighting to be respected just like men in the sport, fighting for equal pay, and even fighting for equal shine in the spotlight. But it wasn't until the LSU women's basketball team won their first ever championship that we realized that the public would show up and show its racist ass pitting black women against white women, all for the world to see. 
But the women's basketball team players, they, they did find equality this week with the first lady, Jill Biden, offering both of them to come to the White House. But since when do losers get an invite to the party? I guess they do when they're white. But guess what? D.C., this disconnect with black culture and issues isn't alarming to me at all. I mean, look at the Cheeto in charge. The former president of the United States, Donald Trump, who became the first sitting president to incite a riot with the not-too-bad domestic terrorist. He's the one who also told America, the land of the free, only if you're not black, that you can grab him by the pussy and still get the highest office in the land. And who pummeled Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign with Lock Her Up, became the first president to ever. Marina, need your help here. Get locked up. Well, sort of. I mean, you won't see a mugshot because only in America with the Central Park Five, who Trump said were thugs, get mugshots for doing nothing. But the overweight bloke goat skated right past the photo booth at the county jail to show that white privilege is still real. Now, speaking of thoughts, let's not forget my honorable mention that we just talked about on Complex's hip hop media ranking list. I mean, I was number 11. It's a number considered to be one of the most luckiest numbers of all, right? Uh, it's a number that's close as hell uh, to the top of 10, but not one through 10. I mean, wow, mama, I actually made it. I mean, I worked my ass off for the last eight years and ranked right after Carisha. A true sign that I must be honest something, I guess. I mean, I shared the list with some of the most iconic names in hip hop media like Charlamagne the God, Noriega, and even Joe Budden. But DJ Envy, I know that you're out there watching. I know you're a Radio Hall of Famer. I know that you've been a part of some of the most iconic moments in the world and part of the number one hip hop radio show that's become iconic to the culture. I know that. But you got to step your game up because, I mean, if you would have had a WWE belt, you could have actually almost beat Peter Rosenberg. Right. But enough talk about white privilege. Let's keep it all positive. Let's keep it all positive. I mean, look how far I've come. I'm not the messy queen that love and hip hop portrayed me to be. Joe Budden and I have actually pieced it up this week. I mean, we should have never had problems in the first place. I mean, we're both in the podcast game. We both made it on the complex hip hop power ranking list. And we both work with Melissa Ford. And that just basically means that we both have had our share of ups and downs. But I'm glad that we're friends again and that that whole petty beef is behind us. I built my own media company, my own media empire with Hollywood Unlocked. I was told that I couldn't do the Wendy Show because I wasn't ready. So I built my own production studio and launched the Jason Lee Show, which is currently on Revolt, another Black-owned brand. When I was overlooked and told no, I kept building my empire. So in addition to the Jason Lee Show, I'm bringing you the Jason Lee Podcast, where we're giving Gag Nation, you, our fans, what they want. My opinions on everything culture, pop culture, politics, and the fuckery sponsored by your favorite public figures. Raw, unfiltered, un unapologetic, unafraid, wrapped in a blanket of compassion, whether you agree or not. And right when you thought that this was it, get ready, because next week or two, I got a big bag alert because there's so much more on the way and we ain't going nowhere. That was the first episode of the Jason Lee. <laughs> Listen, I, uh, what you think? Did we do a good job? I love the show. I realized I got to <laughs> learn English so I could catch up with the lingo. No, no, no. Actually, Jimmy Kimmel has um, Guillermo. Guillermo. Um, Chelsea Handler had Chewy. We got Rico. Okay, I don't feel bad. <laughs> But I feel like it's good. I feel like this is what your fans have wanted. This is what the Gag Nation wants. Jason to be old Jason. And yeah, we're blessed to be part of it. I thought this was great. And let's be very clear on the old Jason. I mean, I will say I'm vibrating at a higher frequency now. Oh, you know, we got to get into some things. I'm going to give you my opinions. But, you know, we're going to try to, I'm going to try my hardest to leave all the animation out because honestly, mm -hmm. it's low vibrational at times and it just really weighs down. And this has been a tough week because all of you know, we lost a really close friend to us at the money team in Hollywood Unlock, Kichi. Mary Key Larico, she was somebody who, at the very beginning of Hollywood Unlocked, was very supportive of me. She called me on FaceTime before I even launched Hollywood Unlocked with Floyd Mayweather, saying that I was going to be big, uh, that was going to be the biggest thing in media. She didn't know I'd be on number 11 on the list, though. She thought I'd be closer to number one. But either way, she believed in it. It's been a hard week, so we it was hard to even pull together the energy to do this show today. But we want to send our prayers to her, the money team, Floyd Mayweather, her family, and everybody out there affected by that. Um, that's it for the first episode of the Jason Lee Podcast. Until then, make sure you're following us on all 
social media. You're following us over at uh, Hollywood Unlocked, the Jason Lee Show. Follow my personal Instagram. And make sure that you stay connected to what we're doing so that way you can stay caught up on guests like our next guest. Jamil Hill. You can clap for Jamil. Please, please. Now, on the show, we get into all things uphill, including her book, Uphill. And this is the cover, so make sure you pick that up. And, uh, and you know, let me tell you, she had no problem spilling tea on the show. Even though we know that's the room where cappuccino was sipped, baby, she had told me something at a party that she didn't put in her book. So after I read the whole book and didn't find it, I had to ask her about it on my show, and it had to do with Barack Obama. Take a look. Good friends with Bob Iger. You were cool with him. Yeah, I'm cool with Bob. Mm -hmm. He's like the god of Disney. I mean, he's like, I mean, some people would say like he's easily top five most powerful people in Hollywood. When you went to talk to him about the Donald Trump tweets, mm -hmm. Bob Iger and Barack Obama were close friends. Yeah, they were then good go. friends. So what happened, you know, he was like, listen, the policy is the policy. I felt like it was another violation. And that's why you got suspended. Like, again, he wouldn't, I didn't need an explanation. He, I wasn't asking for one. I wasn't saying like, please, no, none of that. I knew what it, what time it was. And so he's like, yeah, and, and I think he mentioned he had been in some kind of recent social contact with former President Barack Obama. And he, he agreed <laughs> that like, oh, you had no choice but to suspend her. And I was like, damn, Barack. <laughs> Make sure you also check out Jamil Hill's podcast, Unbothered, and we'll talk about that on the show um, where she's over there doing her thing at Spotify. <sighs> okay, well, listen, um, this has been a lot. I appreciate <laughs> all of you for tuning in. Thank you. This is our first show. And in order to thank all of you properly, I know that Noriega, when I came on your show, you gave me my flowers, but I want to give my bullpen theirs. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.